Hello everyone, this is Texas 22 Jack here. As you can see, I have the L3i Hive chassis. Uh, this finally came in the mail for me yesterday. I'm a team L3i shooter. So these are the L3i colors, but if you're buying it in production, it's gonna come in black. I'm looking forward to highlighting some of its features to you guys in this video. And then maybe for another part, uh, for another video, I could show you guys me shooting it in the range and doing some, uh, some drills. Uh, at 100 yards or 50 or 100 yards. Well, let's get to it. So as you guys can see, this is the L3 Hive chassis. I'm gonna switch to my phone. This is the uh, four end right here that it comes with. Um, Whenever, you, whenever the production model comes, the, the floor end is actually going to stick out to here. I think it's going to be at 17 inches total floor end, so you're getting a lot of floor end. And um, these uh, black and gold colors are only for Team L3i shooters, so whenever the production model comes, it's going to be, uh, this chassis is going to be in all black. Or if you choose to have it recorded by a gunsmith, you could do that as well. Um, my favorite part of this chassis is this forend right here. This forend is a lot skinnier than other forends that you would see, so you can wrap your fingers around it easier. And it also comes with, or you could, I think you could buy the grip tape separately. Um, and it comes with this night vision bridge. So for you guys that like to drive your rifle and, and manage recoil, these are very uh, helpful uh, features of this chassis. One of my other favorite parts of this chassis is the low bore of axis. Traditionally, with other chassis, you're getting the the height from the bottom of this arc rail to the bore axis is around one and a half inch. But with this chassis, it's very low, so it sits on the bag really low. And um, what that allows you to do is it allows you to manage recoil or to have uh, theor theoretically less recoil. We're going to test that at the range in the next uh, series. In the next part of the series but if you think about a wrench right so the higher that you get on the wrench with pretend you're putting force in my thumb this way to my left then the more torque that you're going to have on my pinky but if you're putting the force close to where my my index finger is you're going to have less torque on the pinky um so that's the only i i didn't bring a wrench I wanted to bring a wrench for this video, but I forgot. So this is the best analogy I could think of. So again, think about it. The more you're gonna have more torque if you push on my my thumb than you would if you push in my pinky. And that force is from you know pretend that force is recoil. If the recoil is up here, you're gonna have more torque on my pinky. But if your recoil is over here on my pink on my index finger, you're gonna have less torque. What that means is that because there's gonna be less torque on the pivot point you're gonna have less muzzle rise. And you should be able to spot your impact a lot better because the reticle is not gonna rise as much. Um, so again, we're gonna, I'm looking forward to, uh, this is my center fire one. I'm looking forward to uh, testing this out on the range and seeing what the, imp the recoil impulse feels like. And so that's one of my favorite part of this chassis is that it's got a very low bore axis is only one inch from the center of the bore line to the bottom of this um, arc rail and traditionally usually it's around one and a half inch for other chassis and stocks and I'm um, looking forward to really um, taking advantage of that future and this, those are one of my favorite that's one of my favorite features about this chassis so if we keep moving on um, a lot of you guys have asked if this will come in a CZ inlet this is the Remington 700? The answer is yes, they're going to be coming out with a CZ inlet in the near future. And the cool thing about these chassis is that the inlet is modular, so you can swap out this inlet and change it to a CZ inlet if you wanted to. Right now I have my Remington 700 inlet on there, which my Voodoo is in. So uh, it's modular in that sense that you can change the inlet as well as you can adjust the trigger guard forward and backward what that allows you to do is you can you can um, you can uh, customize the fitting of your magazine uh, a lot better by adjusting your uh, trigger forward or backwards if you want your magazine tight and not moving you can put your trigger 
guard forward more. If you want it a little bit looser, then you can put it back more. And especially for um, rimfire magazines and rimfire stuff that's more sensitive to how your magazine interfaces with the, the bolt, like that's a very important feature. And then also your cheek piece is adjustable and then you have your bag rider and then uh, this uh, butt pad is also adjustable. The published length of pull is, it can go as low as 11 and a half inches to 14, uh, to more than 14 inches. And also the, you can, you know, you can add spacers to this and have a bigger butt stock so you can change this out to a different butt stock. Um, so as it sits right now, this rifle, if you, the balance point is around here. And for my center fire, it's around the same area. Um, this Voodoo right now sits around 22 pounds with the scope. And for my center fire, this is a Voodoo MTU contour. So it's not a straight 1.25 taper. Um, with the scope in it, if I put a scope in it, then it's around 21 pounds. Um, you could probably get more. You can probably get more weight with that if you wanted to. Um, if you had a contour that was a straight taper, uh, it does come with the weights inside, uh, in, in, like on the bottom, uh, the inside, the, the inner weights, and you can also put outer weights on there. So if you wanted to put the M lock weights from MDT or L3I, you could put that. Um, you can put the outer weights on there as well. Again, the production model is going to come with a 17 inch fore end. This, this fore end is a little bit shorter, but this, the production, um, whenever they start uh, ship, shipping out the production models to customers, this part is going to be, uh, the, the fore end is going to come out to here. Also, uh, another thing that's the, that you're going to be able to get is um, some of you guys like to run like the Grey Ops straight bag plate. Well, the, th the cool thing about this chassis is they're going to also, you should be able to um, purchase a extended mag latch or a extended mag, um, mag block that can, I think extends out to here so you don't have to purchase one of those um, bag stops and uh, you can just purchase the the extended mag block from L3i. And also I wanted to highlight the grips. This is the medium sized one. So if you have youth or ladies that are small they have smaller hands, you can uh, change the you can change the um, the grip to a smaller one or if you have big large hands then you can change the grip to a larger one. So that part is also modular as well. Uh, this chassis also comes with one QD panel, as you can see over here, and then three M-Log panels. And again, the for since the forehand is going to extend out to here, this M-Log panel out here is going to be a lot longer than uh, what you see over here. So right now I'm running a uh, impact action. Uh, I believe this is a Krieger barrel on here, MTU, uh, 26 inch. Six Creed more, and then this is my Voodoo VI Precision straight taper, uh, 24 inch with an EC tuner. So that's what I'm running at the moment with my um, with my setup for 22 and for center fire. And you could also get this chassis a lot lighter if you wanted to, so you could take out the night vision bridge and the internal weights and um, get it light so if you're running an NRL Hunter or you could run an NRL Hunter uh, rifle with this chassis as well if you wanted to and uh, I believe they're going to be coming out with a like if you wanted to get a different buttstock for this chassis that's more light um, especially for the hunters then you're able to uh, change out this buttstock and um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty solid. I've, I've been able to, I was uh, shooting it a little earlier, but I'm gonna do some more shooting with it. And this chassis feels very solid and just right for me. Also, the grip from this part to the trigger is a lot shorter, which allows you to uh, have a better, um, have a better 90 degree uh, trigger pull versus extending out your, your, your trigger finger all the way to here. Having it shorter allows you to have better um, fundamentals as far as trigger control and follow through. So this part is shorter than 
what you would normally get from other chassis. I mean, one of my first impressions about this chassis is that it's just very modular where I can, I'm a 5'4", 150 pound guy. And I could just, for me, I have my leg to pull right now 11 and a half inches. So that's really short for most people. And I can just get square behind the rifle and I could wrap my hands around the fore, fore end uh, really well and just have really good fundamentals. This just feels so natural and it just feels so good for me, um, for my stature. And if you're taller, then of course you can extend it out further. Um, but for me, I'm a short dude and, um, you know, we have short people. So this chassis really is um, awesome for short people like me. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, this uh, little uh, review of this chassis, highlighting the features. Um, let's get to shooting it.